हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल ए सोर्स होस्ट वांट्स टू सेंड अ पैकेट टू द डेस्टिनेशन होस्ट सो इफ दिस इज द सोर्स समवेयर इज द डेस्टिनेशन ओके कनेक्टेड बाय आर डिफरेंट नेटवर्क्स सो द सोर्स व्हेन इट वांट्स टू सेंड अ पैकेट टू द डेस्टिनेशन होस्ट द सोर्स हैज टू नो द एड्रेस ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर डेस्टिनेशन if the destination has to reply to the source the destination has to know the address of the source so whenever a message or a packet is sent from the source the source in the packet always includes two addresses one its own address it is called as source address and the other one is the destination address to whom it wants to send the packet so without these two addresses mentioned in the packet it is difficult for the packet to reach to the destination or it is not possible to have the communication at all now in this context i shall be discussing about the addressing so these source address and the destination address which gets included in the packet we call it as ip addresses and if the version is 4 we call it as ipv4 addresses so now uh, ipv4 that is the version 4 followed by we have presently few of the devices like 20% of the devices currently are in ipv6 also now leaving this ipv4 just addressing you take for example in general the addressing system it will have always two different types one is the physical address and another is the logical address so i can correlate these two addresses with one of the example or with an analogy here suppose if somebody is looking for a person by some name or uh, the like they want to know okay where does uh, mr ravi chandra stays or if at all they know his profession they may say where does this engineer ravi chandra st stays so there are so many people with the same name ravi chandra they may be engineers so it is difficult to tell correctly about that person where does he stay or where is his address but if a person comes in search of one particular address like i wanted to know how to reach this particular address by telling see i want to reach street number 9 cross 8th cross some janpath road new delhi okay then it is easy for anybody to give direction to that person to reach to this particular address so in networking if you are searching with the name okay in if you are searching a person by the name wherein there are several people with the same name it is not possible for anyone to tell correctly that address so that is where we can relate with the, uh, we can relate to the ipv4 addresses the physical address we can relate that particular with the physical address but if somebody is searching with this particular type of information to reach a person then we can relate this thing with the logical address so it is difficult to trace a person with the name rather we can trace somebody with the logical address here so this is how i can relate this physical address and the logical address now physical address for a device is always the mac address hope you people have already studied in your previous sub courses a uh, mac address regarding this in detail it is a 48 bit address it is printed on the network interface card of any device so it is a unique number 48 bit number every device can be identified with that 48 bit now to send a particular message or data to any other receiver or any other destination host we require what the logical address that is the, 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 the that is where you are going to study the topic ipv4 addresses so this ipv4 addresses are classified into two types one is the classful addressing and another is the classless addressing and an ip address ip ip stands for internet protocol ip address consists of 32 bits let me give like this 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 is an ip address consisting of 32 bits this ip address is divided into two parts the one part is called as the prefix and another part is called as the suffix 
Now, why these two different components of an IP address is needed? Remember one thing, see, the complete internet is what? It is a collection of networks. Like suppose if this, if there is one network, network 1, network 2, network 3, like this, there are so many networks. All these networks are connected with each other. So, for every network, you require an address. To identify one particular network, to reach to one particular network, you require a net network address. And that network address is what? The prefix. Then in each network, you will be having what? The different hosts present. For each of the host connection, this suffix is. The suffix represents what? Each of the host connection. For example, you take one LAN, okay, one simple network. This network is having what? The different hosts connected okay, to this network. So, if it is like 32 n bits, n bits are representing the network, then 32 minus 1 will represent what? The host. So, this n bits is representing what? The network. Whereas, 32 minus n bits represents what? the connections here whatever connections here there is one here there is one and here there is one like that there may be several other connections also 32 minus n bits represents the different host connections present in the network now these 32 bits if it is used to represent an ip address then just imagine how many addresses are possible in ipv4 so 2 to the power of 32 nearly 4 billion addresses are possible and I said this addresses uh, IPv4 are classified into classful and classless addressing. So, classful addressing consists of what? How many? 5 classes. We have the class A address, class B, class C, class D and class E addresses. Each of these classes, okay, how much percentage of addresses are reserved for each of the classes? You can see here 2 to the power of 32 is how much? Are more than 4 billion addresses. In that 50% is meant for the class A address, 25% addresses are under the class B, 12.5% are under the class C. Then we have 6.25% under the class D and 6.25% under the class E. So this way the different addresses are divided into different class or put under each class. And any IP addresses which are 30, IPv4 address okay, which is represented by 32 bits, 32 bits is in the form of zeros and ones. So, suppose if you are writing all 32 bits in the forms of zeros and ones, just one example I am giving, okay, like this you will be writing the next. So, 8, eight, eight bits, 8 bits represent what? One octet. So, there will be 4 octets in case of IP address, IPv4. So, here it, this will be the, this will be the first octet, second octet, third and fourth octet. And if at all you have to represent any IP address in decimal notation, it is possible you can write down 115, just one example I am giving 20.1. This is one IP address which is represented in Deci dotted decimal notation. Why we call it as dotted decimal notation? Each of these decimal numbers are separated by dots. Okay. Here, the first one, the first 115 in this case, which is, rep which is the first byte here. Okay. Always remember, if the first byte falls in the range of 0 to 127, then it is a class A address. And if the first byte falls in the range of 128 to 191, it is the class B address. And the first byte is 191 to 223, it is class C. Class D range is 224 to 239 and class E is 239 to 255. And as I said, the IPv4 address consists of two parts, the suffix part and the, the prefix part and the suffix part. The suffix part always represents what? the host connections whereas the prefix part represents what the network connection. So, in each of these classes, how many bits are used for network ID and how many bits are used for the host ID? You can see here out of 32 bits in class A, 8 bits are used for 
the network ID and 24 bits are used for the host ID. Similarly, for class B, 16 bits are used for the network ID and 16 bits are used for the host ID. Class C, we have 24 bits meant for the network ID and only 8 bits meant for the host ID. Class D, uh, there is no such division, network and host, it is used in multicast addressing. So, I will be discussing multicast addressing in my future lectures. Class E is reserved for future use. This is what is mentioned in the textbook. So, when it was designed, this IPv4 addresses, it was mentioned as reserved for future use, but that future has become now the past. So, already we have started utilizing the addresses in class E is mainly used for the research and development purpose. Let us take like this class A. Fine. 8. So, I can I will show you proportionally if this is 8 bits okay, for class A, then the next will be what 24 bits which are used for the host ID. Binary notation, you are going to write only in terms of zeros and ones. Class A, class B, class C. So, in binary notation, if you are writing in zeros and ones, the very first bit, okay, is zero here, which is fixed, okay, in the network ID part. Out of eight bits, how many? Out of 8 bits, 1 bit is fixed here to indicate that it belongs to the class A, the binary. So, remaining will be what? Remaining will be here some 7 bits. 7 bits, if you take into consideration, then 2 to the power of 7. 2 to the power of 7 is 128. So, 128 networks are possible in class A. Normally, first we what we said is, we said that 8 bits are used for the network ID. But now you have to exclude the very first bit which is 0 here. Similarly, for class B, you have to exclude the first two bits 1 and 0. And for class C, it is 1, 1, 0. Fine. And for class D, it is 1, 1, 1, 0, the, four bit, the first four bits. And for class E, it is 1, 1, 1, 1. So, this way you have the starting bits, this is class C, sorry, class D and class E. This way you have the starting bits uh, reserved for in the network part of each of these classes. So, here you can see 88 bits were there, but in this case it will be what? 16 and 16. And in class C it will be 24 and here 8. So, class D and class E as I said, this type of division is not applicable. So, this is how you have to remember. Now, based on this information, I will be teaching you or I will be discussing in further video lectures how to determine the network address given an IP address. Okay, Given an IP address, you can determine the network address, you can determine the subnet mask, you can determine the broadcast address. So, hope you people have understood this concept of IPv4 addresses. It is just an introduction lecture for IPv4. I shall be continuing in my future lecture series about this in detail. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.